ask yourself, how good do you want to be? You know, what do you want to achieve? What do you want to be able to do? You know, I explain to everyone I train to be a God because I want to achieve the hardest moves. Yo Gorillas, welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gorilla Nation. My name is Phil and today's guest is somebody requested by the community. Super strong athletes, super strong static skills. I'm really looking forward to this interview straight from Las Vegas, KP Cruz. Happy uh, that you're here and welcome to the show. It's good, everybody. I'm alive and well. Let's get started. <laughs> awesome. For the people who don't know you yet, who are you? How do you present yourself? I'm KP Cruz. They call me the specimen. I'm from New York. I've been doing calisthenics for about three years now. Um, I train to be a god. Like, I want to be super elite. I want to be one of the strongest out here. I want to, like, achieve some really, like, advanced elements and master them and own it, not just do it, own it. You know, that's really why I train. That's, my, that's what I would tell people. I tell people all the time. People look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, I just want it. I want it. Oh, um, and you're quite, quite new into this, in the sport, right? Uh, like I think in, in your Instagram bio, bio, it's not written, uh, 10 years into calisthenics, but you're, you're doing calisthenics since how many years? I started back in 2018, 2018, June, yeah, June of 2018. So I started with a pull-up bar, some dumbbells, you know, I said to myself, I didn't want to just sit around and play video games anymore. because that's all I was pretty much doing. I was always in the crib, just playing a lot of basketball games, sports games, Call of Duty, whatever it was. But at that time, it was like, nah, I want to I wanna get into more, something a little bit more productive. So I started doing pull-ups, you know, push-ups, dips, squats, you know, some bicep some curls, and just kept going, just didn't stop. I used to be in my basement for like two, three hours, just working on the, the fundamentals of the sport, you know, just building that base. And over the months and over the years, it just got strong. Wow. And uh, yeah, what what uh, what's today the the strongest move, the the move that you're or the skill that you're mo most proud of? Um, I like the planche push-ups, man. Like it's so dope. Like I, even when I look at other people do it, it's like th the amount of years it took me to get it. Like it took me three years to get the full planche push-up. Like and then I do other variations. I do the mechanical advantage variations. So it's like the full. It's like it's like. It's just like small Spartan said. It's like an elephant. It's like when your legs are extended, it's so heavy. But when a straddle plant, it's nothing. All that other, all, all those other progressions, they're easy. But when you go to like full, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and I do it with a straight body. And, you know, everyone says straight body planch is harder than when you do the hollow variation. Because when you do the hollow variation, it's like you, you shorten the lever of your body. So it's like when you do it, it's way easier to press because I can feel it. When I do that full planche, it's like, oh, my goodness. But I would say full planche and then one arm handstand. Love handstand. Wow. That's cool. Coming to some, some hard facts, uh, because if we don't answer them, people will ask in the comments. How old are you right now? Um, I've been on Earth for 24 years. I'll be 25 this month. Wow. Yeah, uh, December 23rd. 23rd, you said? Yeah, yeah this month. Okay, cool. So people know that they have to congratulate on this day. Uh, how heavy and how tall are you? Um, I'm around 70 kg, so like 155. I normally stay within the 150s. I don't put on a lot of weight. I don't really want to bulk. I just tell everybody, just get strong. The muscle will come. And then my, I think I'm 175 centimeters. I'm around five foot nine, I believe. Mm -hmm. I haven't like measure myself in years, but I know I'm around like five, nine, five, ten. I, I don't know. I look tall in the video. That's what they say. <laughs> and that's the most important thing on social media, at least. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit the, the story. How did you get from, from playing video games and uh, being uh, unhappy with the, with the video games uh, uh, to, to calisthenics and to becoming the, the superhuman? I don't know. I like, I just came back from my cousin's graduation and then I had left my job. I was working at Walmart. I was an overnight stocker. So I don't know. I just got, I just needed something to change. So as, as soon as I came back from a graduation, we, um, I went to the store, bought a pull-up bar, got some dumbbells and just said, all right, I'm gonna start looking up all these videos, how to get stronger, how to do pull-ups, how to just work on the fundamentals of basic strength, you know, watching Hannibal for King, 
mm-hmm. you know, Frank Madrano. I like watching the old school guys as mad reps and sets because that's pretty much what I was focused on. Like my first year of calisthenics was just basics. Get that, get that basic shit down. Cause like the, the pull-ups, you know, once I got really good at the weighted pull-ups, I got weighted dips in. Then the um, weighted chin-ups, weight, like everything. Like just, you could do weighted push-ups. Like you can never stop doing the basics because that's what got you strong. And then when you add weight, oh, you're going to get jacked. So it's like, that's how it began for me. Just, just always training. Like I, I got obsessed with it. Like I was like, just get strong. Don't worry about how you look. Like it's nice to get the muscle cool, but I want, I want to, I want to be strong. I want to be able to lift my own weight with ease. That's, that's what I say. Wow. So even though you're like, for me, you have like a really impressive physique. Um, for you, it was never about the physique. It was always about the strength and the, the body yeah. weight mastery, basically. Yeah, get strong because it's like, yeah, you got the looks. And I mean, it was going to come anyways, because if you really think about what we're doing, it's resistance training. We're moving our body through space and even weightlifting. You, well, even if you're going really heavy or really light, you're going to put on a lot of mass, depending on how many reps you do or like how much weight you're lifting or how, how slow you go on tempo. Everybody likes to go for speed, but you can, anybody can do all that. But when you go slow, oh my God, I tried to do like pause reps for like full planche pushups. Oh my God. I fried my shoulders, my, my traps, my, my triceps, like, cause you're, you're taking your time with everything. You're putting time under tension. And to me, that's what really builds muscles, the tension. If there's no tension, are you going to build? But you're tearing That's how I look at it. <laughs> so it's like, just control your reps. Like, I don't, I don't chase speed. I don't even chase reps. I do what my body will allow me to, and then just find something else to do. Because your body is, everybody has work capacity. Like, you, you're not going to be able to do the hardest moves every single day. You're going to have to lower your intensity at some point. So you just got to feel out. That's what I say. Just pay attention to how you feel as an athlete, because that's just how it is. Because we can go in feeling hot. But your body may not be feeling up to it. So it's like, damn, I got to, okay, I can't full plans tonight. Let me work on my straddle. Oh, I can't do one arm pull up. So let me, let me pull out the bands, do a band assisted one arm. Just, you can always, there's always ways to train something. You can always pick something apart. That's how I look at everything. Wow. Yeah. Already a lot of uh, useful advice in it. Um, yeah. Maybe fast forwarding to today. Um, so how does your typical workout week look like your schedule for the week? I normally just rotate between push and pull. Like today I did a pull day, but I did legs too. But how I'm doing legs is I'm no longer doing heavy squats, leg extensions and hip thrusts. I'm doing more like plyometric training, like jumps, box jumps, you know, leg, one legged jumps, trying to just train for power and vertical. Because when I, when I recently discovered from my own experience, when I'm doing all these heavy squats and heavy, um, you know, leg extensions and shit, my legs started getting heavier. So it's affecting my planches. And I'm like, damn, I don't want to feel heavy because the, cause the idea with this sport is you want to be floating. You want to be hitting planche presses like, like these guys do, Falan, OTZ, Eric Barzi, all these gods that you see la rosa like all these guys that just play victor like mm. so many dudes are just gods and playing so it's like and i can understand it it's it's the not too much mass in the lower half because our body is like a lever so this is your your upper body this is your, your this is why we never really see guys with tree trunks because mm. it's like if you have all this weight in the back and you could be doing this in your plan just all it's like it's going to be hard to balance. We're trying to find that equilibrium. So when we do our, our full planches, we're just straight. So it's like for me, you know, rotating between push and pull, like I did pull today, tomorrow, today, well, tomorrow, this morning, I'm probably going to do planche push-ups or planche press. And then I just rotate. And then I train until I know I need to rest. The days that I don't train strength, I do like flexibility training and work on my middle splits, my pancakes, because I, I want to have those nice straddles and, you know, just that flexibility for my hand balancing so I can do all the shapes. But that's just how I look at everything. Like just, you have to pick and choose what you really want to train. Stop trying to go in and train everything. I've been there. It sucks. It doesn't work. You're not going to make no progress. You've got to like, okay, I really want the planche. I'm going to train the planche every push day. I'm gonna do handstand push-ups, you know, dips, any kind of push movement. Because from what I see, if you're doing push moves every day, you know, front lever every day, it's like it starts to it just overtrain everything. You don't you want to rest muscle groups, 
rest again, or take a couple of days off, come back, just, just, just find out what you like. Everyone's different. Some people, you can train every day. I train every day. Just don't train strength. Don't go a hundred percent. Like, just be like, okay, I'm tired. Let me, let me chill out. Let me do some flexibility work. Let me, let me work on my straddle for my pancakes so I can have, let me work on my open head shoulder mobility, you know, just pick apart what, what our weaknesses are. We can always train some. We don't have to go in a hundred percent. Just, 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 you know, just find what you like. Be consistent. Sure. Okay. So, um, yeah. What I already uh, heard is um, if you want to train every day, you should lower the intensity. So you sh shouldn't go at 100% every, every workout um, to also avoid like muscle soreness, I guess. Are you, yeah. are you sore sometimes? I wouldn't say soreness. I would say like, you know, there's just certain things that, you know, you know, you wouldn't be able to, like I've been to a point where I could, I did a full planche for like seven days a week, like straight high intensity and if bro it fried me i've never been that fried before <laughs> i didn't want to train because i was training at max intensity every day and i did it just to see what would happen I mean, let me let me train plants every day let mm -hmm. me see what happens and oh man my back everything my my tendons i wasn't giving my body enough time to recover from the damage i was doing so i'm like okay and i had to take two days off or even three because i was just toasted so it's like once again like just find that sweet spot where you know you can bring uh, bring bring in volume get in more volume you know if you can't full planche today do straddle or do tuck some days i'm like you know what we tuck in today i don't want to do no full planches i'm tuck planching all day we go over the presses we go over tuck planche push-ups and just work on just, just just always anything can be trained anything can be trained true How many goals do you think it is? Um, like, what's effective? How many goals should I have at the same time when you say, like, uh, too many goals are uh, hindering the progress? I would say, like, I would refer to what Sign Master said, like, pick about two or three skills that you really want, like, that you just got to have, and then just focus on those. Two for pull, two for push, and then just go with that, and then just, just master it, and then you can rotate them out It's like some days, like I'll do front levers one day and then another pull day, I'll do one on pull-ups or mm -hmm. hefestos just to rotate. Because sometimes I get bored training front lever pull-ups or front lever like every pull day. So I'm like, okay, let me uh, push days. Let me do planche press. No, no push-ups, just the presses or just the holds. And then, you know, one day I'll do handstand push-ups or just wait. Anything where just, just, we got to pay attention to how we feel, pick what we want to train get a good few sets in and just be consistent. You know, that's really what it's about. Like you can, you don't really have to do much like this. There's so much we can do like this. People that just want to plunge. And I'm like, okay, cool. You can do that. There's some people that love front level. You know, some people love handstand. So it's like, you train how you want. That's the beauty of this sport. That's why I like it. We, we meet, I meet a lot of different people with different modalities, different little skills, you know, freaking intricate. I, I like it. That's why I, I wanted to do this because that's what this sport is about to me. It's about networking and connecting with others around the world. It ain't just me. It ain't just you. It's, it's, it's mad people out here. And I'm like, I'm ready. So but that's how I would say. That's what I would say. Cool. Yeah. Um, people asked about your uh, plans journey. So um, maybe going uh, back to, to the days uh, where you did your, uh, your basics, um, yeah. can, you, can you give us some insight into um, the, the, yeah, the planche journey? The planche was mad frustrating. I remember when I used to first start off doing it, I used to do it with bad form. My elbows was not straight. So for me, it was like lacking in the straight arm strength, doing my planche leans. You know, that's the, the foundation. That's what gives you that smooth lift off on the ground. You know how you see guys, they lean in, their feet come off, or mm -hmm. they go straight to a press handstand. So it's like, get don't neglect the lean. That was my big biggest mistake. I was neglecting my leans. Even like probably last year too, I was just recently incorporated into it more. So it's like, you know, that lean, because that's what we do in – every position, even when you're tucking, advanced tuck straddle, you get that straight arm strength. You can, if you have a strong lean, you'll have a strong planche, but you still got to do all the other progressions. But for me, planches, oh man, I think it's just the way my body type is. It's just, 
I have such a lengthy body, long arms, long legs. So it's like planche was such a frustrating journey. And it still is today. I be having days where I feel like I can't even press. I can't even do a push up. Some days it's like, oh yeah, I feel like a feather. Like I remember one day I didn't train planche. I know I didn't train legs. I missed a leg day or I didn't do it on purpose. I came back so freaking light. Oh, <laughs> I was the, the way I pressed, like I did the little air walks and I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is, this has got to be it. So it's like, just, it's the planche, man. It's the ultimate move in the sport. It's arduous. It's frustrating. It's a long journey, but I would say like, even when you get it, you got to master it. Like you don't want to hold it for three seconds. You want it to, you want to hold it like you hold your handstand 30 seconds. You want to master it, but the planche is, oh, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. That's what I would say. <laughs> And putting it on a timeline, like uh, from you starting in 2018, uh, how long did it take? Uh, how, when did you start training specifically for it? For it? Hmm. Start, I would say it took me two years. Because once I started working on the 90 degree push up, I was like, all right, I think I'm ready for the, for the full planche. Because that, that bent arm planche, that's It can help you get the planche, but it's more for planche push-ups. Because if you're really strong from the bottom, you can use resistance bands or like just use your strength to push up and come back down to that position. But I would say work on the straight arm variation because it's just like it's just like handstand push-ups. You're just horizontal, you're not vertical. You know, you work on the bent arm stand, then once you get your handstand, you can work on the negative. Same thing with your planche. You got the bottom, the bent arm planche. Once you get the straight arm planche, then you can start working on eccentrics or just doing combos. But I would say the planche, man, is oof, it's, it's one of those moves. It's, some people get it quick, though. Some people get it six months. And I think it's because that's all they're training. But even then, every, everyone's progress is individual. But it took me two years. And in three years, it took me to get the planche push up. Those are dope. Like, I feel like that's like, I feel like anybody that can, anyone that can do 100 push ups flat just try to do planche push-up why not you, you've already mastered push-ups like <laughs> that's the next level all handstand push-ups yeah maybe in in summary like uh, looking back on the on this uh, three years planche journey three three more than three years three and a half um what are your learnings like except um the the lean that like uh, you would you would pay special attention to the lean maybe what's some other advice that you want to give the to the listeners um And doing a lot of L sit to like planche. So like I would start from an L sit, kick up to planche. So start from an L sit, tuck planche, advance tuck, straddle. That's what really got it for me. Because as you get stronger, you're trying to solidify that position. So you'll you'll start to go pretty fast, but as you get stronger, you'll go slower and slower until you can pause. And then once you get the pause, you have your bent arm planche like we were just talking about. Work on your negatives. Go from that L sit. Straddle planche, straddle full planche, whatever you have, boom, and work that negative for full planche. But I would say that's one of my favorite exercises to get your planches. And then using bands, like use bands, like even using the bands to practice leaning into your planche so you can practice that lift off, your planche presses. Like I love resistance bands. I would say use bands for like all progressions, tuck, full, straddle. That's what helped me get my planche really strong. Like, As, as I fatigue throughout my sessions, once I can't full planche no more, once I can't do no more planche push-ups, I use the bands to help increase volume, refine my technique in my form. So when I come back fresh for another session, I got more reps in or my forms improve. So that's really what it's for. Some people think it's bullshit, but the bands, the bands work, man. They, they're so helpful for like all skills. Like it really, man, you can unlock some impossible moves using resistance bands. But I would say bands is another one. Use your bands. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, something that I um, I had to think about. What was your fitness level when you started, uh, like, working out in I was pretty weak. I was pretty weak. Me and my brother, we used to do this seven-minute um, routine where we would do dips on the bench or, like, you know, Like, that was really hard for me. It hurt it. I, I used to hate dips. I used to really hate dips. Wow. My weighted dip is heavy, but I used to hate that, the, the wide grip. But as I used to learn how to control my weight, I was like, I actually like this. It's quite effective to build the chest, shoulders, and triceps. But I would say 
just doing that seven minute routine. It wasn't really nothing. It wasn't really building a lot of strength and stuff, but that was before we was really dedicated. That's why I would consider when I started training in June, because we would start, but then we would quit. We would start when we would quit. And it's like, you know, life gets in the way, work gets in the way, but consistently from June to now, I would say just doing the basics, pull-ups, push-ups, dips, rows, squats, leg lifts, like get your core strong. A lot of people neglect their core, even when they're first starting out, you got to just, you know, do a lot of leg lifts every day, knee raises. You know, I used to get on the dip station to do knee raises every single day. That's why if you've seen one of my videos, everyone asks me, how can I do that V-sit raise where I'm bringing my legs to my face? And I, I did leg lifts every day because you want your core to be solid and you want that lower back strength, the, the hip flexibility. So I would say just really solidifying the basics. Like I used to come in the gym one hour of weights or one hour of calisthenics first and then go lift. But I'm doing that currently right now, too. But I would say just master the basics, master the basics. Do you think your core strength was also one reason why you unlocked the planche quite, mm, I would, don't want to say fast, but it's quite, it's quite fast, like two years from starting with, with workout? I would say uh, not really, because to get a skill, you have to train it. You know, I can do L sits and lots of leg lifts all day, but if I'm not training this, the planche directly, it's not really going to happen. So I would say like, focus on training the skills that you want, like whatever you're training all the time, you just what you're going to get. True. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's take an example. We have, uh, Matt here and Matt is, uh, is a beginner in calisthenics. He has like, uh, he has set his uh, two to three goals, uh, for himself. Uh, so I don't know, he wants to learn the front lever, um, the straddle planche and, um, a solid handstand. And, um, yeah, what advice would you give to, to Matt, um, for programming? So uh, how does he, how should he create his own training program? So you said front lever, handstand, and planche? Mm -hmm. Straddle planche, yeah. So what I would do is do your handstands first. I always do my hand balancing first just because it's not really a strength thing. It's more like you're just trying to be on your feet except you're on your hands. So mm -hmm. it's like if you're used to that every day, you're gonna get you're gonna become a pro with it. And that's just the foundation for a lot of skills. Like if you're really good at a handstand, you can clap in it, you can jump, you can walk, you can, you know, hand hop if you want. I would say do handstands first, probably, you know, five sets just to get hot, whatever you can do, pikes, just whatever you can do. And then do your planches first because the planche is tough. It's, it's always the hardest, you know, do your leans, do your, do your attempts. You can do your attempts because you always got to start off with the hardest moves first. Once you get your handstands out the way, do your hardest moves because if you try to, let's say, let's say you do your planche holds. You do your planche holds, but you're burnt out. At the end, you want to do planche push-ups. You're not going to be that efficient because you, you already tanked out from doing plant, the full planche holds. So it's like, or even straddles, but it's like, you got to just do your hardest first and work your way down to the easiest exercise, like a drop set. Mm -hmm. And then front levers, same thing. You can do front levers on your pull days. I prefer to like, you can do, you can mix. I've recently experimented with mixing too, like, doing planche and front lever in the same session, it felt kind of cool because it's like, wow, I just hit a planche and then did a front lever like, right after. Like, you can do that. It's like a sensible supersets. Like, you know, one skill right after the next once you recover. But I would I would do push, pull, and the handstands every day. Like, I would say get really good at handstands because handstands, handstands are easy. It's not strength. It's, 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 it's just a balance thing. Like, once you get that balance down, It's, it's, you're, you're good. You can start looking looking for one arms, but I'm sure we got questions for that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, another question was definitely um, any advice on on balancing, like uh, on the the balancing stuff, because with progressive overload, it's it's I would say quite obvious how to get stronger, and uh, mm -hmm. like um, you pay people just know uh, how to work on on uh, strength exercise. But I think balance is a little bit different uh, in in some terms. So um, maybe your advice: How do I improve my balance? How do I achieve um, balance moves like the handstand or one handstand, the quickest? Man, like I, once again, it's like going back to it. Like I would say, really do drill it 
every session because it's not it's something that you want to build a habit towards like hand balancing like i said it is not a lot of strength it's just like being on our feet if we're used to being on our hands all the time we're gonna get it really quickly so you know just drilling the balancing drills like once you um you know just doing them every day like go against the wall refine your alignment you know work on your negatives your pike presses like you know a lot of people want to get the one arm but it's like can you even straddle press can you walk how good are you on two arms? Can you shoulder tap? Like, like have, how much, how solid is your two arm? Can you hold it for 30 seconds? Can you weight shift without shaking? Can you keep your, you know, it's about the, the proprioception, the body awareness. What is your whole body doing while you're doing the handstand? Are you good with moving your legs while standing still? Like there's a lot of mechanics that we have to teach ourselves to do in a handstand. Everybody just wants to get to the one arm, but it's like, dude, solidify the two arms and then the one arm can come later. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to get from the normal, like two hand handstand uh, to the one arm? Uh, just about two years. And then to get where it is now, three years. And that's the thing once, and that's the thing about unlocking a skill. We get it, but it gets better. So it's like, who's to say why, why even say that? Like it just improves as we, We train. Okay, yeah, I got the handstand or I got the one on, but now I gotta, I gotta improve it. I want to be able to be still in it. I want to be fluid. I want to be like moving through the air. But so that's how I say, like, just, just enjoy the process. Like once you get it, I tell people, yeah, yeah, you got the move. Now master it. You know, own it, perfect it. You wanna, you wanna just do it like it's nothing. You know, because these moves, everybody thinks it's so easy. People come up to me and think it's as simple as kicking up and yeah, I'm holding it, but there's so much that goes into this. Like it's the, the awareness and that's something that people were mistaken within this training is the awareness. Yeah. We can shoot. Anybody got strength. Anybody can jump into a handstand and, and do it against the wall, but it's like, can you control it? Can you keep your line straight? Can you keep your toes pointed? Like just, just everything in line. That's what I would say. Cool. And uh, yeah questions about uh, mobility and stretching as you already said like your uh, leg lifts your um it's quite impressive how how flexible you are so um maybe you want to <laughs> tell us how uh, what role plays mobility and, and stretching in your in your workout in around the beginning i used to do a lot of weighted stretching in my beginning of my sessions but now i'm switched to doing it after but in the beginnings i used to just do a lot of jefferson curls Like I'll get a barbell and then, you know, how you do a, like a pike stretch, you try to reach for your toes, bring the barbell down. That's how you get that, that spinal flexion and that mobility in your hamstrings doing a lot of um, pancake stretches. I used to um, straddle my legs. I would sit and reach. I'll put a weight plate on my back, do stuff like that. That really got me fast. And then yeah, doing leg lifts because leg lifts build up that compression strength in our abs, our hamstrings, our legs, and just, Working on it after your training, like I would recommend uh, stretching after your training sessions because our muscles are already worn out. They're already warm. So even after getting out the sauna, it's the best time to stretch and just do it after every session. I'm telling you, you're going to notice quick gains. I used to spend sometimes like during quarantine, I would spend like two, almost two hours stretching because I enjoyed it. Like I believe we shouldn't limit ourselves with just strength. Yeah, be strong. You know, unless that's what you want to do. Everyone's free to train how they choose. But for me, I feel like why not be flexible? Because some of the dopest moves require some flexibility. And I'm like, I want to get flexible. Let's be flexible. Sure. I just have to think about the mana, like, uh, which is yeah. an, an extreme move. Uh, yeah. Is it, is it a goal to to reach something like this or like, uh, I don't know, extreme ISID or like how, how far progressed and motivated <laughs> are you in these terms? <laughs> Honestly, I don't, everyone always asks me, even Mike the saying hit me. I was like, dude, you got to get, are you going to get the mono? I don't want it. I don't want it right now. Like I'm, okay. I feel like I, would, I, I prefer the reverse planche because that, that lean back is what you have to do to get the, the, um, your V sit anyways and the mono. So I'm like, if I get this lean back strong and practice putting the bands on my feet, I, I prefer reverse planche. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice um yeah um 
general health advice is are there any habits anything that uh, you do on a daily basis or like um on a uh, that that is just bringing benefits to you and your your workout i would say drink your water and really just stretch man water and stretching is really helpful because that stuff is is neglected i know some athletes that don't really drink a lot of water i'm like dude you gotta be drinking water man our body is made of that stuff and it lubricates our joints our, our ligaments our tendons and then it's like the stretching a lot of guys they come in we even want to be strong but it's it sucks when you're stiff it's not fun it's like i want to do more moves i want to i want to be free i want to be mobile like I'm, i'm doing a lot of weightlifting too lately too so when doing that you know that stuff is quite robotic that movement the, the curls so that stuff can keep us stiff so i make sure when i come home after my sessions i stretch i loosen up if i feel like i'm getting that round back syndrome where i'm like this i i, I You know, I bring my hands like that and stretch behind me. Just make sure that I'm not getting that 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 tightness. I do not want to be tight. I want to be mobile. I want that flexibility. Nice. Yeah, and, and it's like uh, really fighting against each other because if you lift weights and if you like work out really hard, your muscles uh, get yeah. stiffer and uh, torn yeah. together. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, cool. Your mindset when you train. So, um, with with what kind of mindset do you go into until into the workout? Are you like really calm, or are you aggressive, or like uh, are you happy, or like what what kind of mindset are you in? It's, it's, it's either one. It depends. Either either one. I feel I'm still gonna go in and give myself 100. Even if I'm not at 100, I lower the intensity and still give my 100 because I want to give my all. I want to. Like I said, I, I train to be a god. Like I have a lot of passion in the training aspect of this sport. Like I really, truly enjoy going in there and, and doing these skills and, and progressing and, and getting stronger with the weight and just just seeing the strength go up and looking back. I'm like, like I just I just want to be really strong, bro. Like I, I train to be a god. I'm gonna say it every time because I want people to really understand my my like whole mindset. Like. It took me, it took a lot for me to stay by myself to really realize like I really want to get strong as hell and just go hard and just get strong, train, train, just just train when I can. Even when I was working two jobs, I was working like six days a week. I only had one day off. I was still training because I like I wanted it that bad. I got to the point where, you know, I had almost, I think I had like, I don't know what it was. I was doing a lot of pull-ups and I was training so much. I think I was overtraining. And I had like loud uh, clicking sounds in my elbows and I was just training like crazy. So I had to listen to my body and take a step back. But what I'm really saying is my mindset is just get strong as fuck. Let's get strong as fuck. Get strong. Like don't worry about physique because the worst thing you could do as a human being is not experience what it's like to be strong, to be physical, uh, have the physical capabilities to move in any way that you choose. That's what I would say. And this gives you the the power, even though you you work hard and you do two jobs at the same time. Like uh, it, it gives you the just the, the the energy to still go after the workouts and give one hundred percent. I would say it's more on the obsession thing too. Be obsessed with your craft because look what we're trying to achieve. You want to do a one arm pull up. You want to do one arm planche, one arm handstand, all these difficult skills. I'm like, it's gonna take a long time, bro. You're gonna have to really find some time to dedicate on achieving that. You know, uh, some some of us don't have four or five hours a day. Some people only have 30 minutes. Some people only got an hour. And I tell people, look, use the time that you got, work with what you got, and then just make the gain steadily because, you know, it's better than not training at all. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Did you ever feel that your physique is um, something that's holding you back? Or like, did you ever think about the planche? Ah, damn it. I wish I would be, uh, I don't know, 10 centimeters smaller. <laughs> not really i'm proud of my body i like how i look you know i'm getting stronger I'm, i'm putting on more mass because i have been like once i'm finished with my my calisthenics training i'll go and do weightlifting, and i've noticed it has put on some quite uh, a few masks on me on my arms on my chest you know because what i do is right after my planche work i'll do like bench press shoulder press tricep push downs um you know bicep curls incline bench press 
you know, black pull-downs, just doing the opposites of what I would do. So if I do plank push up, I do bench press or whatever. But that's what I would say, like just being consistent. It's consistency and obsession. You gotta be obsessed. There's no way you're gonna achieve these things without obsession. Cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, becoming a god uh, is, a, is a big goal. So, uh, like, may, maybe you want to tell us what does it espe uh, like specifically mean for you? Is it the feeling? Is it, um, I don't know, the, not, the... Not necessarily the feeling. It's like, it's a mindset. Like, even though, yeah, you're strong, you can always get better. That's really what the mindset is. You can just get stronger. Let's get stronger. Okay, yeah, we got that move. Let's get it stronger now. Like, let's do more with it. Let's like, there's always more there. There's always more to train. There's always more to gain. There's, there's no end. There's, there's no end. It's limitless. That's what it means to me. That's what it means. Nice. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you, you have, uh, also, uh, like the, the, the body fat percentage, you have a really ripped physique, um, which leads to the question, how does your nutrition look like? How do, how do you eat? Uh, how do you maintain this, this body weight, uh, body fat? <laughs> Honestly, it's not strict at all. I eat anything I want, you know, pizza, burgers, you know, fries, How I do it is you do want to eat quality foods. You can't eat that trash stuff every single day. I've been there. I've tried it to the point where, you know, I went to Colorado with my brother and I literally did it on purpose. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to train. I'm not going to go as hard as I normally would do. And I was eating McDonald's, Arby's, Dunkin' Donuts, just not training, smoking weed, just not doing nothing. And I put on 10 pounds. Wow. I was around 150. I put on 10 pounds. I started looking puffy. I started losing my muscle definition. So from my experience, if we're going to be eating all these foods or how we want to eat, we have to make sure we're training or we're going to put on that weight. We're going to start losing our strength. We're going to start losing our muscle definition. So for me, it's just making sure you do get your protein in because I don't keep track of calories. I don't do macros, none of that. I just make sure that um, I get the strength training, just get strong. That's the main focus because, yeah, you can eat pretty shitty, but that strength, man, like, I've experienced it. I, I've, I've, I've went in for a pre-workout one day. I had McDonald's, like two large fries and a burger, like in a Big Mac. It's crap. I was pumped. I did what I did. But would I eat like that every session? Hell no, because the effects of it, it compounds. Like if you're eating crappy foods all the time, it, your body's tired, you're, you're sluggish. I, I, it's not comfortable. So I would say, You know, just eat quality foods, foods that are dense with whole foods, you know, your, your breads, your whole grains, chicken, rice, just eat, cook your, cook your own food because the shit we got out here is it's not really good no more. Everything is, is artificial. They put too much chemicals in our food. We got to start cooking and growing our own food. Sure. And uh, do you take supplements to, uh, to improve your protein intake or something? No, I, I don't believe in taking those things. And I'm, t I'm the type of guy I like to run off my own raw natural energy because some days I wake up, I don't know what it is, but I just naturally be pumped. I naturally be ready to go. I'm like, ah, I'm ready to train. Let's go. People see me and they're like, yo, you ready to train? Even the people at the front desk, they see me and like, oh, you must be ready to train, Katie. I'm like, yes, I'm ready to go. I'm like, this is hungry. Nice. That's cool. Um, yeah. Um, a question also about, uh, your wrist straps. Uh, so, uh, somebody asked, yeah, uh, why does he, or like, uh, why do you use wrist straps all the time? Like maybe you can, can tell us, uh, how, how do wrist straps benefit your workouts? Um, well, when I'm doing a lot of hand balancing and especially planching, the flexion that you get on planch on your wrist is stressful. It's like, For, for me, I have that straight body plunge, so it puts a lot of stress on my wrist. I have that, that strong lean. So I would say if I didn't wear wristbands, I, I would have been injured my wrist a long time ago because it helps prevent that pain. It, it reduces the pain you would get if you didn't have anything wrong. That's what I would say. I love wristbands. Sometimes I do train without them, or sometimes if I don't want wristbands, I just wear uh, uh, train on the uh, parallax. Cool, because the 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 angle is uh, just more neutral for the yeah. wrist, right? Yeah, you don't gotta worry about the bend or anything. You just keep it neutral that position. Yeah, cool. Um, 
maybe to summarize all the the um, workout advice that we talked about and your experience, um, maybe what what are the most common mistakes that you see for beginners and maybe that you did yourself in, in doing calisthenics? Jumping into skills too quick, too early. You know, everybody sees the advanced athletes and we want to start planch right away or front level or flag. And it's like, you don't really want to do that because our bodies don't have the muscle mass required to get into that position. So if we try to do that, we could, you could injure yourself. You could pull a tear or something and you could be out for a minute. But I would say just like, be patient. Like, don't rush. Like you cannot rush, you can't rush strength. This stuff cannot be rushed. If you want everything to be on point, you got to be consistent and you got to be just, just obsessed with the craft. That's what I would say. But like, that's one common mistake. Another common mistake is um, I would say form. Like I can understand when form is compromised as we get stronger, you know, we're not going to do our first planche clean. We're not going to do our first handstand push up clean, but you want to address it immediately because bad habits can go a long way throughout your training. Some of us, Some athletes I know, they arch their back and they never fixed it. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? It's like, did you care? Some people don't care. And that's whatever. You know, you train however you want. It's your body. But I would say, like, paying attention to our form, correct the mistakes now. So along the way, it'll be clean really quickly. And then the third thing I would say, I mean, bro, just enjoy the journey. Like, don't rush. Just, just love it. Like, yeah, it's slow, but... When you look back, you'll be like, damn, I, I made a lot of progress. I really did. I really did. Oh, wow, that's cool. Um, yeah. What are your goals for the new year? We're recording this episode in the mid of mm, December. Uh, so the, yeah. the new year is around the corners. And uh, do you, did you already set your goals for next year? Honestly, bro, one thing I say is... Just keep going. You're not dead. You're not dying. Just keep going. Like, cause, cause if you stop, like, if you just quit, if you just, just give up, nothing's gonna happen. You feel me? Nothing's gonna come. No opportunities will come your way. Nothing will move in life if you're not moving. So I don't even stress about. I don't even make goals all the time. I, I normally just keep things in my head, and just keep moving, man. Honestly, just keep moving. I know things need to be done, but I just. Look at what needs to be done and just just move. Like just keep moving. You can't stop. Don't stop. Just move. Great. That's a good mindset. Yeah. Um, I'm through with the questions from the community. Um, basically, yeah, you covered all the the most common mistakes uh, beginners do and uh, the stuff that you see uh, beginners do. Uh, you cover we covered your um, planch journey. Um, yeah, is there anything else that uh, you want to share or um, that you think is is kind of uh, interesting for for somebody doing calisthenics and uh, having having high goals and uh, becoming a god as well. <laughs> Oh, man, honestly, just just be consistent, man. Because without consistency, nothing gets done, nothing gets achieved, and just the obsession, like be obsessed with the crap, be obsessed with the sport. Like you gotta be like, man, I can't wait to train that plant tomorrow. Oh, I gotta see how this this one arm handstand gonna feel. Like that's how I would I would tell people because that's how I think all the time. Like it's just the training, man. Like enjoy your training, love it. Like we're going, we're all going to have those days where we're tired, you know, we're going to feel weak, but you went in, you did the work, enjoy it. That's what I would say. Oh, awesome. Yeah. At the end of every episode, we always have some quick questions, quick answers and uh, kicking off with what's your favorite food? I love pizza. I'm a big pizza guy. I love pizza. <laughs> nice. Uh, are you a dog or a cat person? I prefer cats. Cats are chill for me. They're like, I don't know. They're just dogs. I don't know. Dogs are the worst sometimes, but they both <laughs> animals can be terrible, but I prefer cats. Cool. Uh, what athletes inspire you? A lot of athletes, man. I like, I like Andre La Rosa, Simon Monster, you know, Ned Cole, Dayan Stibbage. Just so many, bro. There's a lot of us out here. You know, I just wanted to tell people like, It ain't just me. It ain't just you. There's other gods and there's other strong guys and even strong athletes out here just going crazy with this sport. And I appreciate it because it's like 
the stuff we do is not easy. True. Um, yeah, what's your favorite skill? Planch, love planch push-ups. <laughs> I love it. Like if if I'm a push guy too, so you know, I prefer push. I'm good at pull, but I prefer push because it's like it's just planch, but planch yeah. all day. <laughs> yeah, pull or push, easy, easy reply. Uh it's it's push, right? Yeah, push guy. I'm a push. I prefer push moves. I don't know. I just feel like push moves are more impressive, but the thing with pulling pull moves are hard, but they're dope too. So it's like, but I would prefer push. Cool. Um, do you have a favorite book? Are you a reader? Uh, not much of a reader, man. I'm more like, I'm more of a visual guy. I gotta watch videos and stuff or like hear somebody say it, but and I'm not, I'm not big on books for real. Not really. Okay. So no, no recommendation for the poor people out there who wish they would have a, a book recommendation from you. There is a one about a, uh, I can't remember the name, but there is a calisthenic book. It's not overcoming heaven. It's another book. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was. I, I'm gonna look it up and I'll send it to you. But okay. I can't remember what it was. Okay, <laughs> we, we'll put it in the description. Um, yeah, favorite music genre. Uh, I like all of them except for like country music. Country music is <laughs> terrible. I don't know what it is. It's just, some songs can be good, but it's, oh, it's terrible. But I like, I like, I like anything with a good beat. I'll listen to. It. As long as the beat's good, I'll, I'll, I'll sit there and jam on it. Nice. So for for workout, what some music do you listen there? Like powerful music. I listen to a lot of instrumental beats, like a lot of. Anything. It could be electronica. It could be hip hop beats. You know, jazz. As long as I like the beat. Wow. Cool. Uh, yeah. Best calisthenics event you've ever been at? I never been to one, but I'll be watching a lot of these Burning Gate competitions. I just watched one recently. I think there's one in Italy, right? Um, somebody. Uh, I think it's Eric Barzi versus Scarlett or something. Yeah. Yesterday. Oh, they, oh, they, this is dope. I was watching yeah. it from Manuel Caruso. I was like, mm -hmm. yo, this is strong. I like that. But that's what I, I. I would. I've never been to one, but I would like to go to one of those because those be lit. They always yeah. be lit. Yeah. Yeah. True. That's uh, that battle looked insane yesterday uh the the set yeah, that, freaking uh, eric man Bar eric bozzy that he's one of the gods of planch because he hit the maltese on the floor press over there. oh yeah. crazy yeah, yeah and also the the set from from scarless uh like was insane yeah, in the rings <laughs> i've never seen that he he just went into the iron cross every time he wanted to rest uh and in, in between he did his uh, i don't <laughs> know funny others and maltese's Insane. He's one. He's, he's one of the gods on the rings. Yeah. Insane. True. Um. Yeah. Last question. What's your message to the calisthenics community? What do you want to tell the listeners? If you want to get into this, you got to commit. I would say, ask yourself, how good do you want to be? You know, what do you want to achieve? What do you want to be able to do? You know, I explain to everyone I train to be a God because I want to achieve the hardest moves. You know, you may not want to do that. You may just want to be able to do the most pull-ups, the most, you know, hold the longest hands in. Everybody has different goals. I would say figure out what those goals are and just smash them, attack them, and then just smash more and just stay hungry, be obsessed, just just ah, uh, just strive for the for the elite status. Why not? Like you're gonna die. Like, why not? True. Awesome. That was uh, a really powerful, inspiring interview. I'm super happy. Thanks uh, for, for being part of it. And uh, yeah. yeah, how can people get in touch with you? How do they reach you? Um, yeah. I'm all over on Instagram. I got a couple of videos on YouTube. I've collabed with a few athletes, even Sign Monster. You can find me at KP underscore the specimen. And, you know, that's about it, brother. Nice. You people will also find you in uh, in the comments. Uh, so um, yeah, they will also uh, find your Instagram, etc. In the in the in the description. Sorry. Um, yeah. Basically, we're coming to an end. Before you can end the episode and say goodbye to everyone, I want to say thank you again to you uh, for making it possible for accepting the invitation. 
And uh, also thanks everyone to to uh, to everyone listening to this till the end. I'm super happy always if someone sticks with us uh, for such a long interview. And uh, yeah, I think it was full of full of energy. I'm super motivated to train now, uh, to be honest. And uh, yeah, it was super nice to have so so inspiring uh, words from from such a powerful, inspiring person. So a big thanks to you. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Bye from my side. Leave it. Leave it a thumbs up if you if you enjoyed the episode. Helps a lot. And uh, yeah, KP. Thanks, brother.